Hey everyone, welcome to SNA Let's, Let's Play. Play. Our last video we did chapter one of Tatsuya's route. This time we are doing chapter two, which is called Below Zero. Let's go. <coughs> and it's one of the four traditional elements that can be manipulated. The three of us walk into the classroom together with the lesson already started. Luckily for us, everyone seems to be so engaged in listening to Professor Kazama that they don't notice us. There aren't that many seats left to choose from, but Tatsuya finds some empty ones closer to the windows. As I sit down, he and Takumi sit on either side of me. With water, however, you... Hikaru's eyes finally catch us. They dance from Tatsuya to me and then to Takumi, to whom he only briefly raises a single eyebrow. With water, there's also its other form, ice. Usually, you will see ice manipulation referred to as cryokinesis, especially in more scholarly, scholarly circles. Close enough. <laughs> Highly skilled cryokinetics have been known to use some brilliant strategies to defeat their enemies, even those who use such opposing elements like fire. He glances at Tetsuya with a smile, and out of the corner of my eye, I see Tetsuya sit up straighter. Egotistic? <laughs> and luckily for us... <laughs> oh, he's so proud of himself, Egotistic. he's sitting up like... Oh, he's looking at me. Mm. <laughs> okay. And luckily for us, today we happen to have an excellent cryokinetic in class with us. There you go. Yuki Mira, would you come up here and do a quick demonstration for us? Nah. <laughs> Tatsuya pulls himself up from his seat and makes his way to the front of the class. He stands next to the professor. After a moment's thought, he holds out his hands in front of him, as if he was holding something. I gasp at what I see. From Tatsuya's clasped hands, I suddenly spikes out. It moves together rapidly into a single sleek form, a sword. The ice blade glitters beautifully in the light. I know, right? I wish I could do that. <laughs> sword! <laughs> All the students stare at Tatsuya in amazement as he swings his sword around for demonstration. Show off. Mm -hmm. His moves are sharp and precise. And although the sword's edge looks blunt, the form itself is elegant, and I get the feeling Tatsuya is more than skilled enough to use it. I like how detailed it is. Right? If you can really guess what's going on. Logically, I know Tatsuya wouldn't just attack anyone in the class. You sure about that? Uh-oh. Yes, I think we were talking. Logically, I know Tatsuya wouldn't just attack anyone in the class. But even as he stands in a relatively relaxed pose, I can sense the danger that lies behind it. I've used this type of weapon many times to practice sparring with my grandfather. One of the ice's key benefits is that in capable hands, it can become a literal and reliable weapon. Thank you for that excellent example, Yukimura. To form a functional weapon out of ice, it takes a lot of skill, and it takes even more to get it into the desired shape. Can't you just see him, like, when he says, thank you for that, can't you just see Tatsuya, like, straighten up, like, you're welcome, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, so he, proud of himself. Yeah, like, he's just so... <laughs> I can see him doing that. Yeah. <clears throat> now, out of those here who are cryokinetics, would any of you like to try making something? Nope, because they'll look stupid compared to him. <laughs> Many hands go up, but I make no attempt to move. Knowing that I can't make ice, it seems rather pointless to try and volunteer. Even if I did volunteer, who knows what could happen? Explode the whole classroom like last time. No. <laughs> yeah. Besides, I'd rather find out if whether I can do it somewhere private, somewhere I can't embarrass myself or blow something up by accident. 
As I watched a focused Tatsuya help the other students practice, I realized that I'm actually quite surprised. I never would have guessed that he was the type to do any sort of physical work. <laughs> watching him swing his sword around to demonstrate how to attack and defend with a sword. I end up trying to imagine how Tetsuya might actually look working out. Oh! <laughs> Dirty mind there, huh? <laughs> Memories of how Tetsuya picked up... Um, um, num, num, num. Oh, whoa. Man, she's really thinking dirty all the time. <laughs> she is. Memories of how Tetsuya picked me up in his arms, how easily he carried me as he ran, flood into my mind. Dot, 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 exclamation point. <laughs> yeah, it was a just dot, dot, dot. Right? As soon as, as soon as the thoughts come to the forefront of my mind, I can feel my cheeks heat up. I bet, girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop. The last thing you need is to start imagining him without a shirt on or something. Oh, my Ooh. God. Oh, she's really thinking. Ooh, girl. Slow down. <laughs> With my face burning up, I'm immensely thankful that no one has noticed it. You're lucky, girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm Takumi, too. <laughs> Are you pressed with Tatsu, I see. Oh, he noticed. Takumi grins wolfishly at me. He leans in just that little bit closer to me as he speaks. That sounds weird, just that little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Ugh, I spoke too soon. Of course you did. I ignore my own blushing face. He is clearly very skilled. I don't see why anyone wouldn't be impressed. He chuckles at my response, not looking very convinced. Am I really that easy to read? Of course, girl! Mm -hmm. You're blushing! <laughs> I try to hide my annoyance at how easily he seemed to see through me. For all he could know, maybe I was admiring Hikaru instead. Ooh, admiring the teacher. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> admiring the professor, basically. <laughs> oh, my goodness, girl. I let out a quiet sigh. You better. <laughs> well, whatever. I try to focus on watching the rest of the students practice their ice magic as best I can. After the lesson ends, Tetsuya, Takumi, and I walk together out of the class. Close enough. I manage to wait until we're out of the elevator before my curiosity gets the better of me. I look to Tatsuya as we walk down the hallway. So, Yukimura, those ice weapons. I'm assuming that when you hold them you don't feel the cold? You would be correct, although cold doesn't affect me in general. What about heat? Oh, guys, look! It's gonna rain! We look to Takumi, who's stopped by one of the windows. He looks at the sky with a pout. Baby. I better hurry home. I need to prepare for a job I have to do later. If the ground is going to be slick, I'll need some additional gear. Gear? I'm confused at what Takumi is talking about. But before I, but before I can ask, he gives us a quick wave goodbye and runs off, leaving only Tatsuya and I. You're alone at last, honey. Tatsuya doesn't show much of a reaction to Takumi, so I can only assume that it's not unusual for him to just yell and run off like that. Meanwhile, I find it hard to get used to. There's something about Takumi that I can't quite put my finger on. He's so strange. As we walk, I feel like I'm at the edge of remembering where I might know Takumi from and why he feels so familiar to me. My mouse up. <laughs> my phone goes off in my pocket, startling me out of my thoughts. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I quickly pull it out and see Dad on the screen. Hello? Hey, sweetie. How are you? Good. Um, is something wrong? No. I was just calling to ask if you can come down to the office tonight, if you're free. Why did he make that two different sentences? That's weird. I'd like to have di Wrong voice. I'd like to have dinner uh. with- <laughs> That's staying in. <laughs> I'd like to have dinner with you and catch up. 
And I'd also like to talk to you about the business. He hasn't asked me down there in a long time. Actually, hearing the question from my dad leaves me a little speechless. Of course, I'd love to. Since school started, I've been feeling a little lonely. Not that I would tell him that, though. But I'm more than happy to meet him. I don't even bother to hide the excitement from my voice, and I can hear Dad laugh at the other end of the line. All right, I'll see you tonight, then. Bye, Dad. As the phone call ends, I immediately turn to Tatsuya, who seems to have been patiently waiting for me to finish my call. Yukimura, it looks like you don't need to walk me home anymore. I need to go to the station. It might start raining any moment, though. That's fine. I'll just have to deal with it. Tough girl, huh? I have to go to the station anyway. So we might as well walk together. I can help with the rain. I think he's just trying to get close to her. Mm -hmm. Um, help? Well, if you insist. Does he mean, like, buy an umbrella? I can do that myself. She's like, I'm a big girl, dude. Don't do that. <laughs> he can be a little pushy sometimes. You oh, just man. noticed? Wow. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it might be nice not to have to walk alone. Tatsuya leads the way out, and I follow him without further complaint. It's been a while since we left Hajiwara, and we're walking down a different road than usual. I look up at the skies that are threatening to spill at any moment. Maybe it's not going to rain after all. In the blink of an eye, the skies tear open. The rain starts pouring down around us. I stop walking and sigh. Um, and sigh, <laughs> dejected, at the downpour. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> I probably burped maybe about two, three times already. Just leave it oh, in. look at the picture! Oh, I love that. Beside me, I barely noticed that Tatsuya has also stopped walking. He reaches out his hand a little, feeling the raindrops as if he never felt rain before. This sucks. I thought we might make it to the station before it started raining. Tatsuya says nothing, but closes his eyes and clenches his fist with a deliberate motion. Yukimura, what are you... I watch as the rain directly around us turns to snow. That's so cool! Oh, that is cool! Doing. The last part of the question falls out of my mouth, faint as a whisper. I stare up at the sky in amazement, all thoughts left behind. I like the music change. Mm -hmm. This is... No way! Oh my god! That is, this is amazing, Tatsuya! I didn't know you could do something like this. I like her expression on her face. Just right. Okay. And I love how it changes too. Look, he's blushing. <laughs> oh! I watch the gently falling snowflakes. I only get a short glimpse of the many different beautiful fractals before they quickly melt from the heat of the air. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I can feel Tatsuya I can feel Tatsuya's quiet gaze on me while I admire the spontaneous snowfall. It's so cute. <clears throat> because we can't draw too much attention, I need to keep the area of effect pretty small. So you better stay close to me. Ooh. I apologize. This is about as much as I can do. But we should be able to get by without in anyone further away noticing since it's raining so hard. At least until we can get to a shop to buy some umbrellas. We continue walking along the road. So close that our arms and hands occasionally brush against each other. Ooh. I marvel at the beautifully dancing snowflakes in our little snow flurry. I think that's cute that he did that. Yeah. I casually peek at Tetsuya, who is looking ahead, anywhere but at me. He's nervous. <laughs> he is nervous. You can tell he has, like, no social skills whatsoever. <laughs> the, 
The sweetness of what he did isn't lost on me. We're standing so close though, that I guess it can't be helped. Deciding to simply enjoy the snow while I can, I brush away any other thoughts. You better, girl. Hmm. You, you know what she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you uh, before with his shirtless this. Yeah. Right, she's been thinking. Oof. All right, girl, slow down. You just met him. <laughs> we make it to the station without an incident, though we talked much more than usual along the way. Oh, he's actually starting to becoming social. Cool. He's starting to get comfortable around her. The rain stopped before we reached a shop to buy umbrellas. So in the end, we didn't get them. Yeah, you got snow. Although I didn't say anything about it, I felt a little disappointed when the rain stopped because it meant the end of my private snow flurry. Aww. Aww. I glance at Tatsuya. I doubt it will ever come up again, but I did really appreciate it. It's probably one of the sweetest things someone's done for me. <laughs> the air is filled with the sounds of the everyday hustle and bustle of people coming in and out of the building in an almost constant stream. That's only because they are translating it from a different language right. into English. He stops in front of the station and turns to me, shifting his weight from one leg to the other. Aww, he doesn't know how to say goodbye. <laughs> He's nervous. Mm -hmm. Tatsuya looks down at me, and somehow it feels like his dark blue eyes are trying to see into my very soul. Oh. Oh, that's a little creepy. Well, I'll see you later. He moves to leave, only to immediately stop and turn back around. Oh. He looks thoughtful as he quickly adds something. I'll call you later to explain today's lesson if you want. Yeah, lesson. <sighs> oh, okay, sure. That would be helpful. Thank you. Tatsuya gives me a short nod and strides off deeper into the station to catch his train. Left alone, I stare at his retreating back. Oh, feeling a oh. strange heaviness in my chest. Oh, oh, girl. <laughs> Slow down. Here we go again. I watch his butt sway side to side as he walks away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here you go. I shake my head, hoping to chase the strange feeling away from me. Not wanting to be late to meet Dad, I tear my eyes away from Tetsuya and finally move to catch my own train. Oh, she forgot her eyes were glued on him, apparently. Right? Oh, no. I hope I didn't miss it. When that thought... With that thought in mind, I rush out through the crowds and hope I don't have to wait for the next train. <sighs> Having somehow managed to get into a train on time, I've entered the main building of Shinomura Industries. When I enter the lobby, I'm immediately greeted by the kind and gentle smile of the receptionist, Mrs. Marino. Mira, it's so good to see you again. Hello, Miss Marino. It's really nice to see you, too. It's been far too long. Dad asked me to come and meet him. Is he still busy? Mrs. Marino nods lightly, her light brown hair swaying at the movement. Yes, I'm sorry, Miss Shinomura. One of your father's meetings ran over, so now he has one more meeting to attend before he's free for the night. If you could wait for him, I'm sure he won't take too long. A stab of disappointment pops my previous enthusiasm. Oh, well, I guess it can't be helped. Dad is a busy man after all. I try to hide my negative feelings behind a smile. Okay, thank you for telling me, Mrs. Marino. I'll just wait here in the lobby then. Of course, Miss Shinomura. I'll bring out some refreshments for you while you wait. I give the receptionist one last smile and go sit down on one of the guest armchairs by the wall. I sink myself in the black leather and sigh. It feels oddly relaxing to be able to sit here in the lobby after not having been here for so long. Mrs. Marino works as efficiently as ever. She quickly brings out a cup of some vanilla iced coffee and a couple of biscuits to go with it. And then she goes back to her desk just as quickly. My eyes wander around the silent lobby. There's barely any people here, although it's not too surprising considered the time. 
that's going out. <laughs> I sigh, pick up the coffee cup, and lean back in the armchair, ready to wait. As I slowly sip my drink, my mind starts to drift to what Tatsuya had told me while we were walking in the snow. Flashback. We walk along the road quietly. Even though this isn't the first time we're alone in silence like this, somehow something feels different. Cause she's starting to have feelings. Yeah, cause she got some feelings. She got them feels. I got a feeling. <laughs> Maybe it's just the mere fact that we're walking so close to each other, but it seems to affect the mood instantly and make it awkward. He's blushing. Aww, so cute. I sound weird. <laughs> I'm hyper aware of Tetsuya's every movement and just how close he is to me as we walk side by side. <laughs> oh my gosh. Boy, I mean, she's making it seem like just walking next to a guy, yeah. so... Especially ones that she's growing feelings for, so... She grew feelings quick. Yeah. A little too quick. Right? I wonder if he is... Mm, I wonder if he's at all aware of us being so close. No, it's just you, girl. <laughs> Each time our hands come close to touching, I feel like my heart jumps. Yep. Girl, slow down. Take it slow. It hasn't been that long since I've been... Oh, that's why. It hasn't been that long since I've been close to a guy, right? Yeah. You can tell. <laughs> I rack my brain trying to think of something to say, but for once Tetsuya beats me to it. Fujimoto, do you know the history behind Hajiwara? Hmm. Oh, no, I don't. I look at him, but he doesn't so much as glance at me even once as we walk down the road. Ooh. It feels strange that he stared. It feels strange that he started talking all on his own like that. Are you talking? Is he, is he like a kid to you or something? <laughs> it feels strange that he started talking all on his own like that. He usually doesn't say anything unless prompted. That's because he's starting to have feelings. It seems oh, like. I said that wrong. It's not prompted. It's prompt. Oh my god, what's wrong? It's prompted. Yeah, but I think it's supposed to say like prompt. I don't Just know. leave it like it is. Okay. Oh, no, no, back. <laughs> it's weird enough that I don't mind not having looked into the history of our school. <laughs> Tatsuya wastes no time in launching into a full on lecture about Hajiwara. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hajiwara University is one of the top 100 universities in the world. I'm sure you knew that coming in, but also has a history that's hundreds of years along. Hajiwara was originally founded as a neutral zone between supernaturals and humans. But when the supernatural world opted to hide away from humans, Hajiwara chose to continue as it always had. That's when the basement became strictly for supernatural use and protections were put in place to, to keep people from wandering in. Tatsuya takes a breath and looks back at me. It was actually named for one of the most famous sorceress in history. She was once a patron of the school. Your mom? Doubt it. He gives me a slight smile. I guess in a way you've got a deeper connection with Hajiwara than anyone. Maybe it is her mom. It might be. Even thinking back on it, I still can't figure out what Tetsuya might have meant by that last part. Because he knows who her mama is. Didn't they say, though, earlier about her mama being, like, one of the most, like... she's I think she's supposed to be, like, the only she, sorceress left. Like, she's one of the biggest sorcerers or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Why would I have some deeper connection to the school than anyone else? Whatever the meaning whatever the meaning behind his words, it's something I haven't been able to stop thinking about. Ew. <laughs> maybe I'll just maybe I'm just overanalyzing it. Um I think it's just say You. 
Did he mean because of my powers? Hello? I finally register that someone has been calling out to me when an unfamiliar voice snaps me out of my thoughts. I almost jump back. I know, right? Oh! That's why I, want, I hope that other game comes out. Because you can date him in the other games. Ugh. I almost jump back when I suddenly see a strange man bending down in front of me, staring into my face. Um, too close for my... Ooh. Automatically, I lean back away from the... Automatically, I lean back away from the man. He smiles and stands up. You space out pretty hard, don't you? Who the heck is this? Do I know him? I examine the stranger before me. He's young and beautiful. That much is obvious from first glance. Of course, you always look at the beautiful guys, apparently. Mm -hmm. He's dressed extraordinarily casually for a business meeting with the CEO. So, I doubt this guy is the man my dad is supposed to meet. And he's way too close to me right now. Ever heard of personal space? Seemingly undeterred by my complete silence, he continues talking. You've been spacing out for a while now. You didn't notice me right in front of you at all. How long have you been watching me? The man chuckles. I'm guessing it's a special skill of yours. He stands up straight and looks me right in the eye. Creepy. I'm Katsunosuke Kazuma. Just Katsu is fine for you. It's weird, his name is almost like the teacher. Hikaru Kazuma. Yeah. And you are the loveliest thing I've seen in a while. Straightforward, huh? Okay. All right, let us introduce ourselves. I am Sujin Fujimoto. Is there something you need? Not really, no. Just wondering what a pretty little thing like you is doing here. My God. Staring at nothing. Jeez, he is like all out. He's straightforward. <laughs> Heck, I, I, I like you already. Oh. <laughs> I blink, suddenly feeling my cheeks get a little hot. No, don't fall for him. <laughs> First, you're liking Tatsuya. Now you're liking this random guy that comes and just stare, stares at you. Well, I mean, whenever you all of a sudden have a guy that's just coming up and just straight forward, like... It is obvious she hasn't been around many guys. Yeah. <laughs> Being complimented by someone so attractive... Out of the blue gets me a little flustered. There you go. <laughs> yeah, apparently she just goes by attractions and not. But there's something about him, about the way he says it, that irritates me. Surely you must have some business of your own to attend to. <laughs> I look over his casual clothes again, but Katsunosuke just smiles brilliantly. Oh my god, he's a turd. Should you just say Katsu? Like... I think they do later on. Spoiler alert. For the moment, my only business is learning more about you. Oh my god. Really? Is he seriously trying to pick me up? There. That's exactly what I was <laughs> <Yeah>. thinking. <laughs> I see. So you choose to make irritating people your business often then? No, not usually. It's quite rare, in fact. You just seemed quite interesting enough. Well, aren't I the luckiest girl then? I shift in my seat. My eyes quickly scan the room, looking for anything that might help me get out of this situation. At that moment, the elevator doors open with a ding, and my dad walks out. Even from my seat, I can see his eyes land on Katsunosuke, and then on me. He smiles as he walks up to us. I stand up from my seat as our eyes meet. Mr. Kasema, hello. My father inclines his head ever so slightly. I see you already met my daughter, Sujin. Dad laughs slightly, although his eyes remain sober. I try not to frown as I stare at them. So this guy is here on business? Oh, so she's your daughter. Like you didn't know. <laughs> Why else are you trying to flirt with her? She's so cute. Tell me, she, is she single? Oh my god, desperate <laughs> much? Oh Asking gosh. her father? What the? Yeah, that's how I feel. He's so straightforward. I know, right? I can feel the blood drain from my face. Yeah, 
Jeez, that's scary. A little perv. Okay. He must... He just says this sort of thing right in front of my father? Dad only laughs it off. <laughs> All right, we're running late. Why don't we get this meeting underway? He puts his hand on Katsunosuke's shoulder and tries to lead him towards the elevator. Like, get away from my daughter. Katsunosuke shrugs him off easily, a smile playing on his lips once again. Why not let the lady come with us? Jeez. This might run long. And I assume you two are close enough, or you wouldn't have called her here in the first place. Dad looks back and forth between Katsunosuke and me. His eyes stop on me for a moment. He looks pensive. It might not be a bad idea. What? Really? Somehow I managed to contain my excitement within me. Sujin, are you okay with this? Yay! Yes! I'm leaving that in. <laughs> of course, I would be honored to join you. I'm happy that you would trust me with this. Got it. Maintaining my composure just by a thread, I practically scream in my head with happiness. An actual CEO meeting. I'll get to see how big deals work firsthand. Maybe Katsunosuke isn't all bad. Dad moves to take the lead, and Katsunosuke and I follow right after him. We head into the elevator and all the way up into his office for my first business meeting. When we get into Dad's office, he gestures for us to sit. Automatically, I take a seat in one of the chairs in front of his desk, one that I've always felt was mine. Katsunosuke practically falls into the seat with a gentle thud, not even bothering to sit up straight. Dad turns to me. Before we start, Sujin. He isn't just my dad talking now. This is Rakura Shinamira, the CEO of Shinamira Industries. I straighten my back and look at him steadily. Mr. Kasema is Mr. Kasema is here because Shinamira Industries is hoping to buy all of the properties that he and his family owns. At his short exclamation, Katsunosuke nods with a smile. <laughs> I'm hoping that this deal will go through as much as Shinomura Industries is. Probably even more than you. He explains this all with a happy smile, but something about the way he says it leaves me unsettled. I try to fight off the frown threatening to form. I see. I give a small nod and my father begins the meeting. This man, Katsunosuke Kasema, acts so strange for a supposed businessman. Then again, from head to toe, everything about him seems unusual. I watch him out of the corner of my eye while Dad talks. Just who is this guy? I almost want to ask him that. How important could he possibly be? Almost as if sensing my thoughts, Katsunosuke looks at me briefly and grins. Creepy. Really? That's almost like he knows what she's thinking. I mean... He quickly looks back at my father again. Once again, I try not to show any of my uneasiness. How did he even come to be in charge of so many businesses at such a young age? As we discussed before, I want this deal to be kept quiet until it's done. That sounds weird too. It'll make my life easier that way. That sounds like he's hiding something. Yeah. Of course. I read over the outline of conditions you wanted met before the meeting. I will assure you that I will make certain the process goes smoothly for everyone. Katsunosuke chuckles. As expected from Rukio Shinomura, of course. Katsunosuke pulls out a folder from somewhere and tosses it on the desk. His booty. No. <laughs> He was sitting on it the whole time. <laughs> it slides towards my father, who only looks down at it. Where was he keeping that? See, I was <laughs> right. Where was he even keeping that? <laughs> That's where he was hiding it. <laughs> That's everything on some of the smaller businesses within the family. Some cafes, some small shops, and so on. Remember the word cafe. 
Plus, all the info in the spa chain. Betraying no emotions, Dag quietly flips through the various pages within the folder. A few silent minutes tick by. Then he finally looks up at Katsunosuke and nods. Everything seems to be here, just as you promised. I was quite surprised to see how thorough all the information was, even from the seafoam spas. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness you did that after I said that. I would have had to redo <laughs> that whole thing. Hearing a familiar name, I can't help but react. Seafoam Spa? Why does that sound so familiar? The name certainly rings a bell, although for a while I can't remember where I might have heard it before. Oh, the huge spa chain that's really popular. I glance at Katsunosuke. With how he's dressed that bright colored hair and just his general attitude, it's hard to believe he could own any place that's successful. There must be She's something I'm not seeing, the way he looks. right? There must be something I'm not seeing. As the two keep talking, I continue to watch their exchange without comment. Carefully, I try to study Katsunosuke, trying to determine if there might be something more to him than what he appears at first glance. He so freely gives away all this information while Dad is hardly giving away any. Whatever. I watch Katsunosuke as he violates everything I know about business, spilling all his company secrets. Just what is this guy's deal? That sounds fishy. Uh, In the end, talks between Dad and Katsunosuke end up going well past sunset. Throughout the meeting, Katsunosuke continues to offer up information freely, even as my dad remains reserved about how much he reveals. Although that fact doesn't seem to bother Katsunosuke in the slightest. Just by watching my dad work makes me feel more invigorated than I've felt in months. Spending a few hours in an actual meeting was so useful. I think I learned more here in one sitting than I did by just reading books for class. Dad glances at his watch and smiles. I think that might be it for tonight, Mr. Kasima. There's not much else we can discuss until my people look through everything you've given me. Katsunosuke nods at his words. A lazy smile plays on his lips. Fair enough. The two men get up from their feet almost at the same time. As they shake hands, I get up as well ready to say goodnight to Katsunosuke. Watching Dad today, I realized just how proud I am of him. I hope that one day I can make him proud too, that I can learn how to be as confident and professional like him. Dot, dot, dot. Smile. A strange weight settles down in my heart, although it's a burden that is far too familiar to me. I just hope that I'm capable enough to be able to take Dad's place as a CEO one day. Katsuno Suki suddenly turns to me and holds out a card. Um, taking a closer look at the card, I quickly realize it's his business card. Oh, well, duh, what'd you think it was? I take it without comment, but as I move to put it away, Katsuno Suki grins down at me. Flip it over. Okay. I do as I'm told and flip the card over. On the other side, I see something scribbled down in blue ink. Of course it's blue ink. No, of course. It's my personal cell, cell number and email if you want to get in touch with me for a date sometime. Um, really? <laughs> straightforward. <laughs> yep, he's very straightforward. Dr dot 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 exclamation point. What? <laughs> dot 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 exclamation point. <laughs> what? <laughs> as I stand there completely dumbfounded, Katsuno Suki laughs. <laughs> <laughs> he waves at my equally dumbfounded father and casually strolls out of the office. That guy, does he have no shame? Nope. Apparently not. He does not. I stare at the business card in my hand. To say such a thing, and right in front of my father, Dad clears his throat, snapping me out of my trance. Okay, shall we go to dinner then? Oh, um, of course, yes. I ignore my burning face, and thankfully, so does Dad. She blushes. Again. My, my, yeah, she blushes easily. Apparently. My father offers me his arm, and we finally make our way out of the Shinamura building. 
Dad takes me to one of his favorite restaurants, Govea. I've been here once before, but the view and atmosphere of the restaurant are still stunning. You can say that again. Right? It's nice looking. I would love to see a window like that and just look outside. Yeah. Especially out in a beautiful city. Right? We're shown right to our table practically the moment we come through the door. I guess he's that special. <laughs> it's times like this that I actually feel like the daughter of a CEO. Well, there you go. That tells you. <laughs> As we sit down next to the large glass windows, my attention is immediately drawn to the nice view of the city outside. Just like what we were saying. <laughs> I can feel myself finally calming down after the encounter with Katsunosuke. A waiter introduces herself, takes her order, and swiftly leaves. Dad looks at me from across the table with a gentle smile. Finally, we have some time together. I'm sorry that I've been so busy, sweetie. It's okay, Dad. I know that with this Kase deal, things must have been crazy, especially considering how many properties he wants to sell you. And besides, things have been a little busy for me, too, with my studies. <sighs> yes. I can imagine it would be. <laughs> you were looking at me when you did that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yawned inside at the same time. <laughs> and speaking of your... Sorry, gotta be a man. Be a man. Okay. And speaking of your studies, how are they coming along? Oh. Well, there was a lit... I stopped myself and realized what I'm about to say. I can't just mention magic to Dad, can I? He watches at me... He watches me with a curious expression. Um, well, there was a little incident. Yeah, I don't think I should blurt something like that out. I mean, would he even believe me? I got a little lost on my first day is all. So, that was a small adventure. I see. Hmm. I mean, if I didn't know it was real, I would call whoever told me about magic insane or just delusional. I decide not to tell him about the magic stuff. It's not exactly a lie, but it still feels like I'm lying to my dad. And it isn't lost on me that so far he hasn't mentioned anything about my eyes. Dot, dot, dot. Overall, it's going well. All my lectures are really interesting. And I'm already learning a lot, even though it's just the start of the school year. Close enough. Why hasn't he noticed my eye yet? Why hasn't he asked anything about it? I see. Well, that's great to hear, sweetie. You're a smart girl, and you've always enjoyed learning. So I figured you'd have no problem transitioning. So tell me, what did you think of Kasema? The immediate question throws me off completely. I try to choose my words very carefully. I blushed Next when words. I saw him, and he's so straightforward. They gave me his phone number. I think he's a little odd, but he's cute. I, um, well, he was a little bit strange. Just a little bit. <laughs> and even, straightforward. Right? And even though he seemed laid back, he also seemed kind of intimidating. Although I can't quite put my finger on why exactly. Dad laughs at my answer. He was pursuing you pretty hard. <laughs> Even you noticed? That's I would... <laughs> true. He <laughs> can't believe he noticed. <laughs> Are you going to go on a date with him? Yep, yep. While I can tell that he is at least half joking about this, it does make me think about Katsunosuke. I shake my head. He didn't seem like my type. Hmm. It's funny because she was acting all like, oh my gosh, he's so cute earlier. <laughs> Hmm, Kasema may be eccentric, but he is good looking and very wealthy for his young age. Oh really, Dad? You wanted me to go to a rich guy? <laughs> so what is it that makes you interested in him? Well, if I had to name it, then... Besides his lackadacial attitude, there was just something off-putting about him. He nods at my assessment of Katsunosuke. Sujin. While I'd never tell you to do anything you don't want to do, it is customary to wine and dine your clients. He wants me to date this weirdo? <laughs> it can help create a smoother path to achieving a successful business deal. In fact, it may be good for you to take an active role in this negotiation. 
it be a good experience for you. Do your own independent research on this deal. I'd be willing to hear what you find out about Kasema and if why you think this deal would be viable for our company. Consider it some homework to prepare for the real thing. I realized, I realized that I might have been acting immaturely about the situation. Not even for a moment did I think to look at it from the, a point of view of where I could help Shinomura Industries. I never thought about it like that at all. Even though I mumble it, Dad seems to have heard me perfectly. You don't have to push yourself, sweetie. He smiles gently at me. No, Dad. I'm going to do it. I'll take on this project. <laughs> really? This was I was doing so well. Slipped <laughs> out. <laughs> no, Dad. I'm going to do it. I'll take on this project in my spare time and see what I can do to help you and gain some experience. If I want to be a CEO, getting to see the inner workings of a deal this big would be an invaluable experience. Well then, I look forward to seeing what you uncover and the decisions you make. After that, the waiter brings out our order, and we fall into a comfortable silence. Even without words, it's nice to be able to enjoy a quiet family dinner with my dad. I miss this more than I realized. Oh, dad, how's Kao doing? She's doing well, and... He suddenly trails off, his eyes shift away from me, staring instead out the window. Dad? He starts talking, although his eyes still refuse to turn back to me. There's something I need to tell you. It's about your mother. Whatever it was I was expecting, it wasn't this. Even the mention of her feels like a punch to my stomach. I start to feel like I might throw up. Don't do it here, girl. It's too fancy. Desperately, I fight off the urge to make some excuse and just run off to the bathroom. Fortunately, Dad doesn't seem to notice my internal struggle as he goes on. Though there's a pain, though there's pain on his face, his next words come out empty and almost robotic. Your mother left. She said she had her reasons for it. And I'm sorry. I can't tell you any more than that. I don't know what to say. I hide my hands that have begun to shake under the table. No, no, I can't think about her. About what happened here. Even with all the open space, I start to feel like the walls are beginning to close in around me. Mother, no, Shizuka, she, she. I grip onto the tablecloth, hoping it might stop the shaking. But it spreads uncontrollably. I find myself shivering all over. No, 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 don't think about it. Don't think about her. Dad looks at me for an answer and frowns. Sujin, are you alright? Uh, I think I'm just coming down with a fever. I forgot my umbrella the other day when it rained, so I think I just got sick from it. His frown deepens. Dad stands up and holds out his hand for me. Come on, I'll take you home now. Dad takes my shaky hand in his and helps me steady myself as he leads me to the door. Okie dokie. Well, that's chapter two. Makes me wonder, does her dad know about this situation with the mom? Yeah. Because he says, I can't tell you anything about it. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. And then this... But the fact that he didn't... The fact... I wonder, though, he... Like, her mentioning her eyes and stuff, he may actually know about maybe what happened, and she just doesn't have the guts or to may, tell Well, or maybe he doesn't have the guts to ask, or he doesn't want to ask, because it may cause problems. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking, too, with this Katsuno Suki guy. Yeah. He's a little odd. Let's just say. <laughs> I'll say it nicely. He, he's, he is a little odd, but yet he's very straightforward. There's something just, about him. There's something that he says may be, he may, like, you have to keep an eye on him, you know? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll see you next time for Chapter 3. Bye. Bye.